Welcome to the Guiding Creatives YouTube channel where I give you tips, tricks, answer questions, talk about the world of freelancing or being a creative in the gig economy. And today we're going to talk about white labeling, what it is, if you should do it, and some of the drawbacks. If you don't know what white labeling is and you want to get into work as a freelancer or even a creative, it will come across you, but not a lot of people actually give it the label of white labeling. So I'm going to show you how to identify it and then how to make money off of it or how to avoid some traps that people might try to guide you into. So white labeling is when a company brand or business hires somebody to do work for them, create something, and then this company brand or business rebrands it as their own. To simplify that, if you're the freelancer who creates something and you deliver it to the brand, they then put their branding on it, they say they made it, and they do what they want with it. There's no claim to you, you have no association with it, you do not get the credit, anything like that. They own it and market it as them, even though they've hired you to do it. Some common examples, which will ring some bells, is ghostwriting, for example. Think about all those celebrities who hire someone to write their books, but it's their book, their face, their story. That's an example. Other things about this are reports, it could be presentations, it could be designs, graphic design. It could be anything, anything that you can provide to somebody, they can stamp their name on it, claim it as theirs, but it's a little bit different than if I deliver a report to your brand on your brand, that's not white labeling. That is just a report made for your brand, not made for the brand to distribute as their own. That's the difference. It's kind of the distribution and how it's marketed to people and who claims ownership. When you hear the definition of white labeling, you may have one or two minds about it like I did. On one side, you're thinking, this is a business opportunity. I can make money on this. And the other side of you is going, doesn't it sound a little bit sketchy? Doesn't it sound like you're being taken advantage of? Both are true. And that's one thing you're gonna learn about guiding creatives is I'm going to stress that two things can be true, especially in the business world. So let's talk about the pros, how you can make money from it, and then let's talk about the cons. So of course, the biggest money maker of white labeling is simply making money. It is something you can offer. If you are a copywriter, you can offer to be a ghostwriter. If you are somebody who makes reports and presentations, you can offer to make it for people to present it as their own. I've had a lot of agencies and this will actually lean into the cons as well later, but I've had a lot of agencies reach out to me to do social media audits, but they put their branding on it and they present it as they did the work. You can already see how that's a slippery slope, but that is a good way to make money. If you don't care about having your name attached to it, if you don't really care what happens to it when you send it off, go for it. People are looking for that because sometimes people are not just looking for you to do the work. They're looking for somebody to do the work for them because they need time or they need someone who has a little bit more expertise. So that's how white labeling can be a very advantageous thing to offer, but also you can make it an extra. Yes, there you go. The moneymaker word, an extra. You can offer certain things and say, if you want to white label this, the cost to white label is this. Then they have to pay a little additional. That just protects you as a seller. White labeling can also bring you more market opportunities. So because you're working for somebody who might be a part of a broader agency or might have more connections, this has happened to me a lot. This is how I got in with one of the biggest agencies that I do contracts for, is I created something for them. They showed it to the client. The client loved it so much. They said, you know what? We don't even want to white label this anymore. We want you to be part of the team and say that you did it. And that's what happened for me. When you do a really good job at something, it often opens up new doors. And this can happen in two types of ways. The way that I just mentioned where someone takes you and says, we need to keep going with this. Or you build a name for yourself as being somebody who offers a service, who gets good reviews. The reviews will probably be anonymous in this case, but you still get really good reviews. And so then other people are giving you opportunity and you get to reach these markets, these companies that you may never have been able to work for. I did an audit for a huge tech company. At the stage I was in, there was no way I was getting access to them. In the future, maybe they'll hire me themselves, but I, white labeled this for somebody so i got to work on a huge tech company which they took and presented and came back with good feedback i would not have had access to that with my own name so don't underestimate the power of opportunity if you offer white labeling as a whole so maybe your services are just white labeling you do not want to be the face of anything you don't have to be 
that's another benefit that you can offer. If you are somebody who wants to stay anonymous, who wants to live a little bit more comfortably, because I will say, as I've had to scale, I've had to put my face in front of things. I've had to do all the meetings, give all the presentations. If you don't want to be that person, if you just want to be the person who does the work and passes it off and lets somebody else handle the upper levels, that's how white labeling can unlock that for you. Because you get to just do the groundwork, you get to make money from it, they handle all the rest. So depending on where you want to take your journey, because I know being anonymous, putting your face to a brand is a big struggle for people, this is an easy way to do it. And the final pro that we're going to talk about is being able to focus and hone your craft. If you are focusing on just white labeling like we just mentioned, not only does it give you the power of staying anonymous or just letting you do what you want to do, it also means that you don't have to market yourself so hard. You are not building this huge personal brand. People are not hiring you so they can stick your name on it, so they can link to your LinkedIn. They're hiring you to get the job done, which means all this energy, money, resources, time that you would have to put into marketing yourself, you can put it into your work. You can put it into the services you offer. You can just build your career. Don't underestimate that. For some people, that's the perfect fit. If you're like me, not quite, and you may have to deal with some of these cons, so let's get into those. The total opposite side of the spectrum that we just spoke about is you actually get your brand diluted when you white label. So when you white label for people, like I did for this big tech company, they don't know who I am, even though I did the work, even though they were impressed. I get no claim to that. So for me, somebody who is building a brand with my name, my business, my face, I don't get to put that on my portfolio. I don't get to brag about it except saying it and hoping you take my word for it. They don't recognize me. They don't know me. I am a stranger to them. So as somebody who's trying to build a brand, although it is good to build it financially and maybe make these connections and partnerships, you should be looking for either other sources of ways to build your name or reconsider white labeling at all. Something else to consider if you have a brand and your face is to the brand and you're really thinking about your reputation is when you white label, you have little to no control on what they do with that. So if you create something for somebody and they go and smack it on something you don't align with or they give it or present it to a brand that you don't align with, something happens where there's some miscommunication about how this is going to be used or they change their mind on how they're gonna use it. Once you agree that it's white labeled, you sign off, you deliver, you're paid, you don't have any control over where that goes. So although on the outside, it can't tie back to you, unless of course they do tie back to you and say you did it, but then you can explain the whole white label situation. But anyway, if you are like me and your morals and your values have such a hard tug on your business, which I hope they do. If they don't, work on that. But anyway, if you have strong morals and values and you're really trying to care about what happens to what you do and who you work with, this can be a deal breaker for you, I'm afraid. This con or risk is the biggest one that I face and I wanna give a huge warning to any freelancer, any creative out there. This happens in two ways and we're gonna call this section competitive risk. So what happens is one, the person that you do a white label project for, instead of continuing to come back to you to get white label projects done, they just steal the template that you created for them and reproduce it for all their clients. So you've white labeled one thing for them to give out. And instead of hiring you to keep producing this for different clients, different people, different things, they just take your work and then do it themselves. It's kind of the risk you have to take because if they own it, they do have the right to do that with it. In my experience, that's poor etiquette. And it's a touchy situation. Like when you're on a platform, it's different. When you're selling, sometimes in the contract, you can actually put the kind of use. So if it is just like a commercial use for one brand or business, you can make that very clear. And then they have to pay for extended use, for example. That is an option. If you've ever been on the website Creative Market, they have things like that. Another risk that really grinds my gears that I faced so much is when people are white labeling, they're not telling you. So if you have extra charge, that's out the window, but they're not telling you and they're just trying to steal your work. They get you to do an audit. You do that audit and they edit it and reproduce it. You never knew that they were going to put their name on it. You never knew that they were gonna take it and give it to their clients. Lock your PDFs. 
I'm telling you right now, if they're gonna copy you, make it hard for them to do so. I've had so many people do this to me and they get caught because they're like, oh, the PDF is locked. You cannot edit my PDFs unless I've given you permission to do so, we've agreed on it and you've paid for it. That isn't on my service descriptions, so I recommend you put it on yours, but that's how I catch people. And then when you're working on somewhere like Fiverr, sometimes they give you a bad review for it. For me, I'd rather take the hit than give you the satisfaction of ripping me off. So you have to be careful for that. Another risk of white labeling is if you put all your eggs in one basket. So I spoke about how one of the amazing things happened to me was I did white labeling project, they loved it, now I'm working with them and I'm literally client facing with them, it's crazy. But that could have went one or two ways because we had a gap of time where they did not have client flow for me. And so I slowed down other clients because I really wanted to work with this agency because the opportunities they give me are crazy. Then I realized, oh, I'm completely dependent on their success. Because when you white label a product for somebody and it's their job to really sell it or promote it or get it out there, they might not do it. They may be on a different timeline. They may not do it successfully. It may not work. Then if you are dependent on them to be a returning client, and all your reviews and success have not been attached to your name, uh-oh, <laughs> you are digging yourself a hole. Instability and client flow is always an issue with anybody who wants to be a freelancer. So this is something you need to take seriously and you need to really think about. White labeling at the core has its pros and its cons. I think it can be a very helpful tool, especially if you are somebody who wants to be more anonymous, more low key. I think it's a great path to take. If you are somebody like me, who wants to scale to be a brand, a face, a reputation. I'm still on the fence if I even like doing it because one, it has unlocked so many doors for me. Maybe it's just the stage that I'm in because right now I would say no to white labeling projects, but if I hadn't have said yes in the past, I probably wouldn't be where I am now. So if you are somebody who is hoping to have a similar trajectory that I am, or you really wanna be a personal brand, a face, an agency, you really wanna grow and be client facing, my advice would be do it for a little while. It'll unlock doors, it'll be practice, especially if you're practicing how to create something and it won't hurt your reputation, but protect yourself and be ready to scale. Don't get trapped because if opportunities unlock for you to be the face, to be client facing, to put your name on it, don't retreat to a comfort zone. That's on white labeling. If you have any other questions, please let me know. This video is coming up for an outsourcing etiquette video I'm putting out. So that's why I wanted to put this one first because this is going to tie in very, very nicely. So like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.